Well, the first thing, if you want to do your labs and your spreadsheets using uh, Microsoft Excel, I wanted to let you know that you are supposed to be able to get it for free as a student at MJC. If you go to the MJC webpage to the online education and you scroll down, there should be a free download of Microsoft. Uh, you do have to have it downloaded onto your computer. There is a way to use Microsoft Office online or through the cloud uh, with MJC student ID, but that does not work. It doesn't let you get the, uh, the line equation, so it won't be enough. You have to have it downloaded onto your computer, but you're supposed to be able to get it for free. Once you have your data in Excel, you want to, well, first of all, you want to have your X values to the left of your Y values. That's the way that the Excel will plot them. Your X values are your independent variable. This is what you controlled or set during the lab. And then the Y variables are the independent variables. So then you can select these boxes of data and go to insert and then I have some charts over here go ahead and do a scatter plot don't do these ones that have the lines already drawn just do the one with the dots Scatter plot just with the dots here alright so we have a plot of this data once we've done what we want to our plot we can select this window Let's see if I can select this window and then copy it with the Alt C and we can go to a word file and we can paste it so you could paste it as an Excel chart or you could also paste it as a picture I'm gonna go ahead and paste it as a picture here and the difference between these is that the Excel one is connected to your Excel file so if you go back and say whoa what is this point over here I'm going to have to fix that. That was supposed to be 1.31. All right, now my graph looks more like a line. And then if you go back to your... Okay, that's interesting. So the Word, the Word document fixed the line for the Excel picture, the Excel uh, object, but it did not fix the line for the one that was pasted as a picture. So the Excel will still be connected to your data, which you might want or you might not want but it's good to know that it's happening. When you do your editing on the chart, instead of having a box or some other place selected, you have to make sure you have the chart selected. So the whole frame should show that it's selected, not just like a data point or the axis or something. The whole, the whole chart should be selected. When the chart is selected, you might have some menus up here that say chart design or format. Also, sometimes you have a, uh, a little box up here or oh, I just double clicked it and so you might have formatting the chart area so here we have the chart design is the tab that's selected so sometimes I've seen a little menu up here if you don't see a little menu up here you can add a chart element there might be a little button up here that says add a chart element and we have the chart title so we have above you can uh, if you delete your title by accident you could put your chart title up there you can also put your axis titles so here's your vertical title that is the density and you also want to put the units there the density is in grams per milliliter so you don't want to have just the word density you want to have density and the units okay then for the horizontal these are your X values. This is the concentration, and that's in mass percent. So for your data for lab two, these might not necessarily be what you're doing. I'm just trying to show you how to graph things, and you should put what the variables are and what units they are. So there's different parts of the lab, different data that you are using, so make sure that you have your labels, your axes labeled appropriately. Also, whenever you have a graph, the title should be um, whatever is your Y versus whatever your X is. Okay, 
So it shouldn't be called lab two chart or lab two part A or my best chart ever or anything like that. The title of the chart should be the dependent variable that's plotted on the y-axis versus the independent variable. That's what this chart is graphing, how the density is affected by changes in concentration. So to get to the axis, you can use this menu. Again, the chart elements, the axis. You could have the axis options. That will bring up this selection, and then you'll have axis options here. So you can, this is how it looks, this paint is how it looks, the fill on the line. This is other making a shadow on it. So that's not what we want. We want the data. These triang these rectangular colored bars represent the data. So you want to click on this selection that says that says the data. If you want to change the text, I guess you could change the text. You can make the text bigger. But we want to change the data. The access options when you open that underneath the data, what can you do with the data? You can change what you're graphing. So for example, if you wanted to spread this out a little bit more, you could make it go from 10 to 60 instead of from 0 to 60. Really, um, I think this axis has a little bit more of an issue here. We want to spread out this data. This doesn't, you can hardly tell if the line is going up or down here. So for this one over here, we don't want to have it start at 0. Maybe we want to have it start at 0.8. So now we can really tell that this line is going up and down. So if you, all of your data is clumped together, you might want to spread it out by changing the axis in that way. What we want to do now is add a trend line. We want your spreadsheet program to calculate what the best fit line is through these data points. So we can select the data if we want. And another way, add the chart element. We want to add a trend line. And go ahead and go to more trend line options. So we could call up this menu over here and figure out what the trend line is. So it's auto already added a trend line, a best fit line. Here again, the paint bucket shows how it'll look. What we're worried about is how it's treating the data. That's these rectangle bars. We want a linear line. In one of our future labs, we, we're going to have something that's not linear. But most of our labs are going to have linear fit to the data. And then we want to display the equation on the chart and also display the r squared value on the chart. So now the equation that goes with this line is on this chart. I'm going to move it over so I can actually read it. Also, I'm going to make it bigger. Let's see. Let's get that a little bit bigger. Or maybe make it bold. All right, I can see it now. So we have the line equation, y equals mx plus b. Remember, for a line, we have y equals the slope is the, what's in front of the x. And the intercept is the, x, the other term that's added or subtracted from the end. Uh, and the linear fit will have this type of equation. The R squared value is a measurement of how well the data points are falling on this line. So the line is completely straight. It's not you know, going up and down and zigzagging to match the dots. This is the line that shows how the data is and the dots are either doing a really good job or a not so great job of falling onto that line. So this R squared value shows you how well they're falling on the line. So we do want to show these on the graph. If you're having trouble finding this, make sure that you have the Excel downloaded. This is the step that you can't do uh, in the online version of Excel. For part A of the lab, we're almost done. We have the graph, we have the title, we have the axis titles, we have the units that each piece of data is using. We have a trend line with the equation and the R squared value. So this is what the graph should look like for just one line. The only thing is for part A, there are there is a question where we have to extrapolate. We're being asked for a certain y value that is not shown on your line. 
what would be the x value. So we want to extend the line a little bit further. Like for this set of data, what if we were asked how does the concentration look for a density of 0.9? Well, 0.9, that's not being shown for our line. So we have to show that. I'm going to go ahead and select this chart again. And then up where the chart design is, I want to go ahead and go to the trend line and the trend line options so that I have this trend line. Again, I want the bars. I don't care about the paint and what color it is. I want the bars. And so I want to extend this line a little bit more. And I want it to go backwards. So let's see if we could go backwards 10. I think if we went another 10, that would probably do it. I'd probably be able to see where 0.9 was on the graph. So let's see what that does. Okay. It kind of goes off my graph here. So let's go ahead and fix this axis. Okay, now I think we do want to go to zero. Oh, just about, just about. Let's go a little bit further. So instead of 10, let's do 15, maybe 12. Okay, so now if we were trying to figure out where the 0.9 met up with the line, we have enough line on there to be able to do that. And so you can adjust both of those things. You could adjust where the trend line is by having this menu that has to do with the trend line. A lot of times clicking on the trend line will bring this menu up or looking for trend line in this menu will bring that menu up. If you want to change the axis, more axis options. One of the reasons why we make this graph rather than just keeping things as a table is because it's a visual representation of how these uh, measurements are related. They're related in a linear fashion and as one increases, the other increases. And so we go from having just six data points to having a line which has an infinite number of data points. And so we can use that line to figure out data points that we don't have. So if we wanted to figure out at a mass percent concentration of 30, what do we expect the density to be? We can use this line. We can take the 30, go up to the line, and go across and figure out what the density would be. It looks like the density would be between 1.1 and 1.2. To me, it looks like a little bit less than halfway. Maybe it's 1.14. So we can use this graph to estimate. Questions 5a and 6a are asking you to visually use the graph to estimate and to show that you've done that by putting a line on that graph. So what I did here was I already pasted the graph into Word. You can draw a line in Excel, but it's a little bit easier, I think, to draw it in Word, or you could even draw it after you've saved it as a PDF if you're good with manipulating PDFs. But in Word, what you could do is you can insert a shape. There's lines, there's rectangles, arrows. So you can go ahead and pick a line. And we want to know for a concentration of 30, what's the density? So we start at 30 and we draw our way up until we hit this line. You can make it a different color if you like. You can make it thicker if you like. Let's make it a little thicker. Wait, make it there. Okay. So we have this line and then we're going to have to draw another line to go over to the y-axis and figure out where it hits the y-axis. So we'll put that there. Oops. Let's see if we can make it, there we go. And then again, we'll make this a little bit different color. We'll make it thicker. Okay. So it's okay if they don't completely uh, touch that, but it just shows that this is what you use to visually find the density at a concentration of 30. So another question is to look at for a certain value of y, let's say it's 0.9, yeah, let's say 0.95. So for a value, a density of 0.95, what does that mean the concentration is? So we're going the opposite way. We know the y 
and we're going over to our line this way and then dropping down to find what the concentration would be. So let's go ahead and put that line on there. So 0.95 is about there. We're going to follow it over to this line here. Let's make this over here. Let's make this yellow. Okay, cool. And then we'll go ahead and put one more line to drop it down to the x axis. All right. Okay, let's make this yellow. There we go. So it looks like for a density of 0.95, it would have maybe a concentration of about eight or nine. Looks like that would be definitely more than five, less than 10, probably about eight or nine would be our concentration. But that's how visually we would estimate that for question 6a. And this again is using a part of the line that wasn't there. We had to extend the line as I showed you a couple minutes ago in order to be able to do that part 6a. For part B of the lab, we are going to try to figure out how to put a second line onto this graph. So we have a second set of data. So it's still concentration versus density, but this is a concentration of a different substance, B. So we want to add these points as a separate line, not try to make them part of this line. If I click on the graph, I should be able to get to the menu that says chart design. That's what we want to have so that that has all these chart elements and stuff in here. And there should be something that says select data. That should be one of our options. And we want to select data. And right now it's showing what data we're using. Let's go ahead and rename that. That is substance A. Okay, so that's substance A. That's the data that's already plotted on our graph. We would like to add another one, and that is substance B. Okay, so we have substance B. The X values for substance B, we're gonna go ahead and select them over here. So it tells us which sheet they're on, which cells they're in from A10 to A14. So I think it's easier to select it than to try to type that stuff in there. So that's what I did. I made sure that the uh, cells were visible when I have this window up so I could just go and select them. The Y for some reason came up with this weird thing in there. We need to get that out of there because for Y what we want is this. Okay, so we have the name, the X values, and the Y values. So if we click OK, we should have another set of dots over here. It kind of uh, reformatted our graph a little bit. That's okay. We'll uh, make it look pretty in a little bit. I think I'm going to make this go a little bit lower just because it seems like these dots are getting cut off. So I'm going to go ahead and select this axis and see if I can make it go down to 0.6 now maybe. Okay. That looks better. And then I'm also going to select this data. So now we have this data selected. And I would like to show that trend line and R squared value as well. This stuff applies to this line. For this one, we're going to expect an equation that has a negative slope. So it's going to be y equals negative something x plus another number. Let's go ahead and choose the trend line options. So just choosing the options made it go ahead and do a trend line. It's linear, that's what we want. For this one, we're not gonna have it go beyond where the dots are, but we do want to display the equation and the R squared value. And I'm going to put it over here so I can read it a little bit better and also make it a little bit bigger. So I can read it better. There we go. And there is a negative sign there. It's a little bit hard to see. Maybe you can make it even bigger. So it's a negative slope. 
and it has a larger intercept because if this line kept going, it would hit the uh, it would intercept the y axis at a larger number than this one would. It would intercept down here, so that number is smaller. Okay, so we have our equations and our r squared values and our lines for part B of the lab. So now we're ready to just go ahead and select this graph and copy it and paste it into our Word program. For part C, in addition to having a graph, we want to try to figure out the average, the mean, and the uh, standard deviation of these sets of data. So we have two sets of data and we want to figure out what the average is and what the standard deviation is. So I went ahead and labeled these boxes because that's where I plan to put that. And then if I select the box and I start typing equals, then Excel knows it's going to be a formula. And then I will start typing average. Oh, I just got to the A and we can click average. And now it wants to know what numbers do I want to average. So you can select all these boxes or you can type in the first box and then a colon and the last box. B19 to B28 is what we're working with and have that in parentheses and then press return and it calculates the average for you. For standard deviation we'll put equals and we'll start typing standard deviation for Excel we want this STDEV and then we want those same 10 numbers. Don't include your average in there we just want these numbers B19 to B28 and we press return and it gives us a standard deviation. I'm going to go ahead and just copy these formulas and put them in these boxes and so now we see that this one over here instead of B19 to B28 it, it modified it for us and it says oh you must want C19 to C28 and that is true and for the standard deviation C19 to C28 so it's doing it for those uh, those boxes. Okay. So now we want to visually see this graph. We can see that the averages are very close, but we can see that the standard deviations are a little bit different. What does it mean to have a smaller standard deviation? Well, it means that these values are closer to each other. They're more tightly grouped. These values are more spread out. And it might be tough to see that from just this list. The standard deviation gives us some idea but if we could see it visually in a graph, that would probably help. We don't want to plot this as our y value and this as our x value. These sets are not related. It's not like this is related to this and this is related to this. We don't want a line of these two together. What we want on the x-axis, we want for this set, I'm just going to copy it over here, put it over here. This set was all done with scale 1 or for your lab, it was all done by the students in lab one. Oops. And this set over here, let's go ahead and just take that and we'll just put it right beneath there because all these were gotten with scale two. So for our X and our Y values, we just want to have these ones over the one and these ones over the two. Let me show you what that looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and insert a scatter plot with no lines. This time we do not want any lines. We just want to see the spread of these data points, the ones from lab one and the ones from lab two, or in my case, uh, scale one and in scale two. Oops, I don't have scale two. Let me fix this a little bit. Let's say this is a reading in kilograms. Again, this is different from what your data is processing, but I want to label these correctly. So this axis over here, I know we want some axis titles. So this is the scale used. So we either use scale one or scale two. And then these values are the kilogram readings that the scale gave us. So this, put that over here mass measured or mass obtained 
and that is in kilograms. Okay, so we have the scale used, scale one or scale two, and this is the mass that was measured in kilograms. And so then our title of our chart could be mass measured versus scale used. There we go, so that's a pretty good title. And that's it for this graph. We are not getting any trend lines. We are not getting any R squared values. We're just visually appreciating how, again, this data is more spread out. I told you that it was more spread out because we got the standard deviation and it was larger. This data is closer together. And also visually, you're asked to check and see whether any of these data points seem like they are far off from the other ones. Like for this one, oh, maybe... We have this point, the one at 63.44 kilograms, seems like it's a little bit further than the others. This one is 65.66 kilograms, seems a little further from the others. So those are the data points you're going to want to check and see whether they're outliers or not. But visually, we can take a look and find those points a lot faster than if we had to just look at this big list of numbers and see which one is further. Visually, it's just easier to find.